All right, today I'll be showing you how to adjust the valves on a 2005 Yamaha V-Star 650. We've got the motor out. You don't have to actually remove the motor to do this project, but it is uh, going to take some disassembly of the motorcycle. You've got to remove the fuel tank, the air box, uh, parts like that just to get to these cylinder head covers here and get to your uh, rocker covers. So first thing you're going to want to do is, uh, well, like I said, remove fuel tank, remove the air, air box. You can get to these. You don't have to remove the carburetors to do this, uh, but the carburetors will be um, right here and a little bit in the way, but you will not need to remove those. We've got four Allen bolts on uh, both of these co chrome covers here. We've already loosened these up just to save a little bit of time. They're a five millimeter uh, Allen head. So you can take and loosen those up. That cover just pops right off. The second one, we've got 10 millimeter bolts around the top and there is uh, two gonna be on the rear. There's gonna be four of the 10 millimeters on the front. So go ahead and remove these two. And then don't just simply lift up at this time. You need to lift up on the back and slide that forward. And you've got two posts here that you wanna, don't wanna break off just by simply lifting up. And now we've got your rocker covers here. This is, again, this is the rear cylinder. We've got two, one exhaust here. And on the other side, we got an intake. Going back together, you wanna to make sure that that O-ring is good. Make sure that's seated properly. We've got this hose here that runs to the air box. Uh, don't have to remove that. It will be in the way a little bit, but um, hopefully you guys can see around that. We've got two 10 millimeter bolts on this cover as well. Again, an O-ring there going around the uh, um, the cover there. Now we've got your rockers underneath here, and then you see your two adjusting screws here. Those are 10 millimeter, and you use a nut to, to loosen those. And we've got, uh, now we're gonna need the feeler gauges to do this. We're also gonna need to pull this cap right here. It's a flat, uh, flat screwdriver style cap. I'll show you what that looks like. The larger the screwdriver, the better, because um, if you get too small a one in there and you turn it, you could turn it inside of here, damaging this plug. Just doesn't look quite as nice, so you want to make sure that that is, uh, make sure you use a large screwdriver to loosen that. We've got a 17 millimeter nut over here. This is the inspection window. Loosen that up, and then we've got um, where you can see inside of here. I'm going to pull this, the front uh, cover off here. I just want to show you what it looks like underneath there and show you what you got to do there. We've got, again, four five millimeter Allen bolts. I just have two holding this on here. And go ahead and loosen those, pull this cover off. And then we've got, um, well, I've got Allen underneath here. They might be 10 millimeter. Uh, bolts underneath here as well. This one you just pull straight off just like that, but there's four of them on this one. So now we're on to the, the front cylinder rocker arm covers here. Again, 10 millimeters. And these are going to be tightened down uh, when you're going back together. I just have them loose just to make this video go a little quicker. This side you've got a water line that's going to uh, potentially be in the way. You can actually um, loosen that clamp up if you want and remove and move that out of the way. You don't have to. You're able just to get in behind there and kind of pull. A lot of times you can pull with your hand or just a small pry bar get in behind there. You just have to move it about a quarter inch. You're not going to break anything by doing that. You don't want to move it much more than a quarter inch though when you're doing that. Now to find top dead center you grab a 14 millimeter uh, socket there with a wrench and you turn that uh, flywheel over or turn that crankshaft, your flywheel is going to spin. You're going to line it up. You're, there'll be several sets of lines in here, and there'll be one that has a T with a line beside it. The T and the line beside it are, let's see, going to be for your rear cylinder. Well, let me check this here. Spin this around, go clockwise when you do this. A lot of times, well, if you, if you, uh, can pull off your side cover here. You can do that, and then you can see what your camshaft um, sprocket, what position that is in. There's dots that you need to line up there. You should be able to do it all off of the flywheel, though. Another thing that you can do is take your spark plug out. You can stick something small down inside there, 
I like to use a zip tie, something that's not going to uh, break in there, but it's also not going to damage your, your piston. And we can pull that cover off there. We've got your camshaft underneath here. Now you can take and spin that around. There's a dot on your sprocket there that needs to be straight up and, and match up with that tab that's on the top. And you'll see that when you're spinning this around. Set of lines there, there we go. We weren't on the right stroke. So you wanna make sure you're on top dead center compression. Now that that dot is lined up, now if your valves are close to being uh, where they're supposed to be, you should have a uh, little bit of free play on both of those. And we'll, we'll check those now and adjust those if needed. So there's your specs there, 0.07 to 0.12 millimeters for your intake, which would be this side here and this side here. And then for your exhaust, it's 0.12 to 0.17 millimeters. That's exhaust is here and exhaust is here. Once we adjust the rear or check the rear, we can move on to the uh, front cylinder. And that's going to be a different timing mark here, a different top dead center mark. And I can show you that. I'm going to show you what that looks like there in that window uh, when we get these adjusted. Look through your feeler gauges. Make sure you find one that's going to be a kind of right in the middle there. We're going to look for a 0.1 zero uh, for the intake and stick it in there these are actually yeah these are gonna be good this is a little maybe a little snug this is probably gonna be um, we're gonna be within limits um, but it's maybe a little snug if I was to uh, gonna be adjusting these perfectly I like to get them right in the middle but that one's actually pretty good there then we're going to go to the exhaust. It's 0.12 to 0.17. Find something in the middle there. We're going to we're going to go to uh, 0 0.1 0 0.13. Stick it in there, and that one is too tight. So now what we're going to do is grab a 10 millimeter wrench. Loosen that up. Grab a small Allen. And then put that in there, see if we're in the right area there. I'm gonna loosen up a little. Once it gets loosened up just a hair, you can actually just use your fingers to loosen that adjuster nut. And then we can tighten down that uh, lock nut. Now I like to leave my feeler gauge in there. Tighten it down and it shouldn't move that adjuster screw. If you leave your feeler gauge in there, that'll help not move that adjuster screw. A lot of times, that if you take that uh, feeler gauge out, that adjuster screw will go down until it's seated against that valve, and uh, that is why I leave that feeler gauge in there. And then just double check that there's a little bit of drag, uh, but also not uh, too terrible loose, um, but you don't want too much drag as well. And we've got those tightened up. I'm gonna go ahead and spin this. Well, I'm gonna show you quick. Um, what these timing marks are, and then uh, no, I'm not. I'm gonna I'm gonna find the top dead center on this uh, front cylinder, and then I will show you what those marks look like. So this one here, you spin around until you see another set of lines, and I don't think they're the first set of lines you'll come to, but I'm gonna double check. You can do the same thing. You can pull your cam sprocket cover off and line that dot up. Okay, so it is going to be the next line that you come to. After you adjust the rear, you're going to turn this, and I'm going to guess that your flywheel is going to turn about halfway around. I can tell you for sure when we get in and pull this uh, flywheel cover off, but it is your, your next line that you come to is where these uh, valves need, or these uh, where the camshaft needs to be lined up. Now you've got a little bit of play in there. We can go through, do the exact same thing. Just um, uh, check your valves if they need tightened up um, or loosened up, do that at that time. I'm gonna take the camera now and show you what that mark looks like, and then you'll be able to adjust these valves on your V-Star 650. If you have questions or comments, make sure you let me know those in the comments below. If this video has been helpful, also please make sure you like and share and uh, let me know if there's anything else that you want me to do a video on. There is the mark there for the 
top dead center on the front cylinder. So that's what it's going to look like. Uh, for the rear, you're going to have that same mark there, but it's going to have a little T beside it. So that is adjusting valves on a Yamaha V-Star 650. Thanks for watching.